Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is May 10th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. We celebrated Mother's Day this weekend and if the U.S. Census Bureau's latest report is accurate, young women across the U.S. won't be joining us as early as they used to. According to a recent survey, birth rates have declined for women in their 20s and jumped for women in their late 30s and early 40s. The trend has pushed the median age of U.S. women giving birth from 27 to 30, the highest on record in history. Yes, women are waiting until they are older and wiser to have children, and that is awesome. In other news, do the book titles The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, and The Titan's Curse ring a bell? If you have children around the ages of 8 to 10 who are into reading fantasy novels, then you've likely purchased a book or two. The latest news about this fantastic book series by Rick Riordan is a Disney Plus television adaptation called Percy Jackson and the Olympians and will feature a multiracial cast of main characters instead of the white characters described in the book series. Variety reported that Leah Sava Jeffries will portray Annabeth, a true daughter of the Greek goddess Athena, who is a brilliant strategist with an active and curious mind. And Arian Simadri will star as Grover, Percy's friend, who is a satyr, half boy and half goat, disguised as a 12-year-old boy. 12-year-old Leah is a young Black actress known for her role as Lola in the Fox music drama Empire. And 16-year-old Arian is of Indian American descent and most recently appeared in the Disney Plus remake of Cheaper by the Dozen. Novelist Rick Riordan recently took to his blog to declare that the race swaps of both Annabeth and Grover for the upcoming Percy Jackson and the Olympians Disney Plus show was his choice and decision. Thank you so much, Rick Riordan. This type of multiracial representation of the heroes in children's books will bring a sense of self-acceptance to all children. In other news, Kevin Samuels is dead. How sad. The YouTube Superstar Relationship Bureau made his claim to fame by giving Black women relationship advice that often felt like a tax. A week before his death, Samuel shared a video on Instagram where he said, if you have made it to 35 and you are unmarried, you are a leftover woman. You are what is left. Men know that there is likely something wrong with you. So we have a single black man telling black women that unless they are married by 35, they are flawed. Hmm. What does this sound like? Oh, misogyny. Well, the announcement of his death was met with surprise for some and for others delight. One black woman wrote, I don't mourn for people I don't like, but not everyone feels that way. Let's chat with two feisty women with opposing opinions about the teaching of Kevin Samuel. First, we have relationship expert, marriage whisperer, and best-selling author, Dimple Thacker. And then we have Danielle Patterson, attorney at law, founder of Patterson Law Firm, representing victims in personal injury cases. Welcome to the feisty ladies. Kevin Samuels is dead. How do you ladies feel about his work and the legacy he leaves behind? So here's what I think. I think, honestly, he was completely misunderstood by women, completely misunderstood. And here's why. His message was spot on. The way he delivered it was not. The, you see, there's a difference between the way men and women speak and the language of man and woman. and I believe that his delivery was very much a direct um, delivery that didn't land for women. But when you look beyond the words and where his heart was and where his um, message was, it was all about everybody being happy and everybody having healthy, happy relationships. I don't believe his intention was to... Um, slander women, but I think the way he did it, his direct approach was the problem. Well, I'm going to disagree with most of that, but not all. 
Firstly, you cannot separate the man, his delivery, and the message. You just cannot. That's not how communication works. So I live in a world, and I think that we most do, that it's not, not necessarily just what you say and how you say it. It's also the intent of the words. The mm -hmm. intention was to be a rabble rouser. The intention was to denigrate specifically black women. And I'm going to speak about my culture because that is much of what his audience was and who it was geared towards and tell you that it was to denigrate black women while uplifting black men. And I think that the two things can coexist. In order for me to be happy does not mean that you have to be sad. As a matter of fact, I agree. The point here is for us all to win. We can't have a healthy relationship if both parties in the relationship are not healthy. And that was not what was being promoted. And therefore, it was an ineffectual message. And that's really all there is to it. An ineffectual message from an ineffectual man with flawed and skewed viewpoints. And I would 100% agree with some of that in that, yes, a relationship is all about win, win, win. 100%. And I would disagree with his intent. I would say his intent was very much to provide women with a different viewpoint, but the way he did it was not landing. And that for me is, is why I agree with the messaging, but I disagree with the way it was delivered. And therefore he didn't create a win-win for anybody, especially himself. Well, you can't really create a win-win when you're not qualified to deliver the message that you're trying to deliver. And this is a problem that I see in society in general, but very specifically with these social media influencers, because that's all he really was. He wasn't qualified. This is a man with three failed marriages behind him. All we know is that he had broken and failed relationships. He wasn't successful in any of them. And the most evident in his lack of successful relationships is the fact that in his death, he was maybe in the bed, maybe not, with a woman that he met literally the night before who had no means to contact his family who were so distant from him, and that shows that there was a breakdown somewhere, that they didn't know where to find him. And he's out telling Black women, again, I'm always going to come back to who he's talking to, Black women, and I'm always going to feel a little bit more comfortable talking about Black women and how we feel when I'm talking to other Black women because I am a Black woman and specifically black women in America. And I understand Dimple, you have an entirely different perspective, but you are not a black woman, a black woman, excuse me, and you're not in America. So, which is a totally very, very specific kind of life that you have to live and trials and tribulations that you go forth and you experience to be able to be a black woman in America. So I'm gonna speak from that perspective and say that you told black women that, um, you're over 35, so you are therefore a useless woman. You are therefore a used up woman, and you are therefore an undesirable woman. If you are overweight, anything other than a size four or five, size six, American size, which is much bigger than y'all size four and size, size six, Dimple, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, so, you know, so if you're size four and it's a size six, that you are therefore undesirable and not worthy of a quality man and that uh, you, nobody cares about your education and your accomplishments, and that if you do all of those things and you worry about being you too fat, you're too educated, and you're too successful, all you're gonna do is die alone. And guess what? Kevin Selby Samuels, you were three times divorced, estranged from your child, as we know from your back child support orders, that you, uh, the reason that you kind of were broke is because you had so many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in arrears child supports. You didn't have a relationship with your parents such that your mom had to find out you passed away from social media, very unfortunately. And I think that that's really a horrible thing, but it also speaks to the man. And so you died alone. And guess what? You were out here and you were sexing an overweight woman according to your own your own, your own, own qualifications on that. Specifically, he always said anything more than a size four, size six was overweight and undesirable. But that's who you died underneath. Maybe if she really was a size four or size six, she could have pushed you off of her. That's all I'm saying. You know, because what she said was she couldn't get you off of her. Because I know I could have got him off of me. Brilliant. You are just brilliant. And I just, 
hands up and respect you because 100%, 100%, I am not a black woman. I don't live in, in, in the USA and I can't even begin to fill your shoes or walk your path. Okay, so one of the things that I completely agree with with what he said was he was interested in women being happy. Though that's something that I heard him say over and over again. He talks about women being happy and about women um, not being able to hear the truth, but yet they expect men to hear the truth all day long. And honestly, I really believe that sometimes women can't handle the truth. Even when it's as direct as possible, they can't handle the truth. And these are the same women in their 35s and their 40s who are single, who aren't happy, right? And so for me, his heart was all about happiness and love. So 100%, he did say that women over 35 are leftovers. And the truth around that is, I actually agree with that, that women over 35, if you haven't figured out how to have a healthy relationship at the age of 35, 40, then there's some work to be done. There's some absolute work to be done. Okay. So I will give you that. I think that we all are a constant work in progress. However, I don't believe that our entire, a woman over 35 not being married means that she has not had successful relationships. Again, the premise is therefore false. So what we know is that women have the most healthy relationships. We have them with each other. We may not be able, and there are some, and I'm gonna say, you know, we, because I've had successful relationships. So there are a couple of faulty premises. One, not everyone wants to get married. That's that's the first. Not everyone mm. wants to get married. The second is that not everyone want not every woman wants to get married to these men that are available. So, and that's the thing that I think has bothered me the most about the Kevin Samuels argument is because it's all about what the women need to do and what how the women need to change and how the women need to up themselves and how the women need to level up. But the men have gotten exactly one tidbit of this, which is to be a high valued man. Yet none of them understand that the vast majority of these men out here are not high valued men. That's what they seem to, the disconnect seems to be. Cause I'm sorry, I don't want by myself from up at the corner that's still living on the baby mama couch, but they not together and he don't pay child support cause he's still trying to get himself together cause he was coming out this rap career, but he's 50 years old. Again, I don't want Kevin Samuels. 56 years old, still living in an apartment, leased by his cousin, because his name's not on the lease. So that's also why they didn't know whose apartment it was um, when he passed away. He wasn't a high valued man by his own definition. He was coming with too many pieces of baggage, too much turmoil, and he was not right with himself. And I say, you can't preach what you can't live. So this false prophet, I'm not here for it. You know, women spend a lot of time um, criticizing and critiquing men, but then, and they moan about the tone in which they're spoken to. And yet the number of times that women speak in a tone that is criticizing and critiquing. Now, for me, when we criticize and critique anybody, it's, we've got to be careful. Women, constantly use um, language like um, it's, you know, oh, only men would do say that and typical man and really belittling men. And actually when the role is reversed, they can't take it. And so for me that it's about it being equal. It's about saying, yes, you can be a strong woman, but you don't have to put men down in order to be that strong woman. Yes, you can be a strong woman and honor and respect men and women. So that for me is the piece that I agree with. But how do you have that message when you're, the way that you deliver that message is to put women down? So therefore, let's say, I'm just gonna say, let's say, let's say that was the message. Let's say it was, because I don't, I don't believe that was the message. I don't see it as him putting women down. I actually see it as him um, helping us see a different perspective. Because when we take away all the, all the, um, when we look behind the words, 
when we look behind the words, why did he spend so much time and so much effort talking to women? I mean, he initially started off giving advice for men, right? And then he yes. moved on to women. Wonder why? Why? Why did he do that? Why? Um, very that simply. That's very. That's actually very easy. It's called marketing, and that men actually don't fall for this. I believe also that Samuel was also uh, negligent in how he um, delivered his message, meaning he did irreparable damage to the individuals that he was targeting, specifically black women. He did irreparable damage to relationships between black women and black men. He didn't help them. He helped to destroy our community. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for your feisty opinions about the controversial Kevin Samuels. It seems as though Dimple believes there was merit in his messages, despite being delivered inappropriately. And Danielle believes the result of his teachings was a resounding slap for Black women. What do I think? I honestly couldn't bring myself to watch any of his videos at any time during his teaching because I'm not desperate to hear a random man tell me how to define my life. If a man is not pledged to stand beside me in life, his opinion doesn't matter. And honestly, if a man wants me to even listen to his opinion, he better put some sugar on it. Because black women have had enough of being abused and criticized while black men call it tough love. Why is it that we black women need so much tough love? No man should beat us down and tell us he's doing it to help us become better. Do we even have a right to be bitter when you leave us with such a nasty taste in our mouth? Black women don't need tough love. We're already tough. You hardened us. You made us like this. We just need love. Well, it's time for a break. Why are women in India angry with Priyanka Chopra? What happened to end the 10 day hunt for an escaped inmate and corrections officer? Answers to these questions right after the break. Don't miss it. Hi everyone, my name is Coco. I'm the founder of Coco Face Yoga. Face Yoga is a great natural solution to regain or maintain your youthful appearance. We wake up sleeping muscle in the face to lift up the face and relax overworking muscle for wrinkle reduction aka it can be natural alternative to botox or plastic surgery at the age of 27 i had a plastic surgery failure which made me realize that i should have done some natural solutions like face yoga then i started studying it started teaching it and then it's a big business we offer the service tutorials through our face yoga app, social media, including TikTok and YouTube, private session, group session, and certification. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about celebrity couple Nick Jonas and actress Priyanka Chopra who shocked their social media followers when they announced that they had welcomed a baby back in January via surrogacy? This weekend, fans were again shocked to learn that their baby had spent more than 100 days in intensive care and finally came home. The joyous news silenced many women in India who were very vocal against Priyanka's choice to use a surrogate, with some women saying she was exploiting poor women. Well, let's check in on that side of the world. Let's welcome our very special correspondent from India, Manikiran, to the feisty. Welcome to the feisty, Manikiran. What's going on in India? Why are women so upset about Priyanka using a surrogate? Hey, uh, I am very happy to be a part of the Feisty. Thank you to Erica for having me here. Uh, I'm from India and uh, recently I saw that there was a lot of backlash on the internet because Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas had a baby via surrogacy. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, arguments on the internet against surrogacy. And the shocking part was that most of them were coming from women themselves. 
So I'm here to debunk some of the most co common arguments that are used against surrogacy. Uh, first of all, I think that people uh, feel that they say uh, surrogacy is against nature. So don't you think all of technology is somehow against nature or it utilizes nature for the benefit of mankind? Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, recently, uh, Jeff Bezos traveled to space, right? And that man spent $5.5 billion during the pandemic uh, to pollute space. That sort of money could have been used to provide healthcare to so many people during the pandemic. But he used it for, I don't know, his own personal goals. So given the type of resources Priyanka Chopra has, I don't think that it's... Uh, wrong on her part or anyone else's part to use that sort of money for their own convenience. And it's not like she would have forced another woman to bear her child. The, one, the woman who would have given the child birth, she would have received so much money that uh, all her life would be sorted. But I don't know why uh, people find it problematic when two women are just happy doing their own thing. Uh, also, there's this argument that rich women are exploiting poor women. So let me just say that capitalism is exploiting all of us. And that if people talk, there are people who talk about poor, poor women only when it comes to these issues and not when it comes to other relevant issues like burden of contraception, abortion laws, rape punishment. So if you're not thinking about poor women when it comes to those issues, I don't think you have the right to talk about poor women when it comes to like, you know, these celebrity gossips and stuff like that. That's right. It's my money and I can do whatever I want with it. Thank you so much, Maniki Dan, for the inside scoop in India. Make sure you come back to share more news and insights from around your way. In other news, 10 days ago, the world watched as authorities announced the hunt for corrections officers Vicky White and inmate Casey White. Vicky had been a deputy in charge of transporting inmates in Alabama, and she and Casey White were last seen getting into a police car and driving off to take him to a mental health appointment. There was no mental health appointment. But by the time authorities realized that this was a prison break, the pair were long gone. Vicky White and Casey White had known each other since at least 2020, according to the sheriff. Investigators learned that she and Casey had developed a special relationship over that time and she would often give him special treatment. She had announced plans to retire to the beach, even going so far as to file paperwork for her retirement and sell her home for well below market value for quick cash. On the final day before the beginning of her retirement, Vicky and Casey disappeared. It took more than a week for authorities to find them, and when they did, officers conducting surveillance spotted Vicky White exiting a hotel with a wig on, and she and Casey got into a car and drove away. The police were following behind them, watching what was happening. And then BAM, a US Marshals Task Force member ran into their Cadillac. The car spin out of control and rolled over. They pulled him out of the car and tried to get Vicky, but she already had a gunshot wound to her head. Casey White reportedly told officers, help my wife, she shot herself in the head and I didn't do it. At first the police said that Vicky was the driver, but then they changed to say that the inmate was a driver. Suspicious. And then when they took Vicky to the hospital, she died. She died. Casey White had been in jail for many charges, including attempted first degree murder. Vicky probably met him and he was kinder to her than any other man had been. And even though he was a prisoner, she thought he was just misunderstood. Why do we keep doing that? Why do we sometimes see the best in men, even when they have proven themselves to be the worst? I don't know. I don't know. We can be so dumb sometimes. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome to the Feisty. feisty. Erica. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women.